Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. And in this episode, I want to begin by making a few purchases. I've put these off for a little while, but I want to get... I, I have confidence that our mission this time is going to be success, and I want to uh, spend a little bit. First getting these pro parts, and especially these antennae, which I think will be helpful on uh, longer range missions. I think these two in particular could get us to the Mars, or if you like Duna, but really Mars. And so I think this this is important. I also think it is time for lights, so we'll get the illuminators. And uh, we still have enough to get this science. Let me just take a peek at some of the stuff we have uh, allowed for now. Okay, uh, I'll hold off. Well, hmm, barometer is really useless, but and uh, accelerometer is only if we make a touchdown somewhere. Uh, maybe we should think about that. What else do we have? Let's let's assume that our our interest is in making making a touchdown on the moon with a probe. That should that, that's not our goal in this uh, in this episode, but it might be our goal in the next episode. We've so we've got the lander legs. So I guess before we make a landing with a probe on the moon, we should unlock the seismometer. Just because there's no reason why. Oh, offward. Off-world mining program. Keythane. Oh, Keythane is over here, huh? Okay. So noted. All right. Uh, so let's let's unlock these advanced science instruments. And after that, uh, Gu will take 500 science. Okay. That's our goal then. So on this mission, I want to get the science that I need to unlock the Gu container. But... Hmm... Keythane. I, I think the Keythane satellite will have to be something separate. Alright, uh, let's go to VAB and see what we can do about fixing up that probe from last time so it doesn't have the same fail. Now, first of all, we really need to rename it. Uh, I, we need to have a name for the probe. And so, thinking about it, uh, we, we used Asmob for for one of the... Let's, let's go with that idea. Hold on. Uh, so, but that was the man mission. Uh, maybe using scientist names for no. Uh, l l let's go for uh, just uh, straight up uh, sci-fi writers. So I'm gonna call this Heinlein on the Forsetti. Okay. So this will be Heinlein, and uh, the moon is a harsh mistress, so it's all good. Um, and the idea, so one commenter, Blaine Crichton, uh, mentioned that maybe we should have things reversed. Maybe we should have the thruster pointing up here and have the, uh, so that, uh, so that we can put thrusters on here instead of having these RCS ports. And that might be a good way to go. So, instead of having it look like this, we're going to change it radically. Let me set some of this stuff aside because I want to remember what I need. But this this whole body is going to be different, so we'll keep the reaction wheel. We'll need Mechjib eventually. And we want this antenna. And this antenna. Hopefully I'll be able to see everything. So it's just the body here, and I'm going to no, nope, going to take that off. So the new idea, maybe this dish isn't the one that we want, and I'm going to attach this like this. Interesting proposition. And we're going to have a stretchable fuel tank that is not that large, but that large. Gonna put one mech jib here. And 
since this decouples, we can uh, put the parachutes up here too. And what we're going to do is put one of the little guys, uh, the sustainers that we've been using before. Oh, not that way around. This way around. Oh, uh, actually two wouldn't be a bad idea, but... No, it's not snapping. Nope, that would not be a good idea. Aha, there we go. Good snap. Alright. So we've got Mech Jeb. Let's see what we can do with this. It's tank. I'm afraid it might not read how much Delta V we've got. Oh, it does. It just puts it in neg- Oh, negative is fine. I can deal with negative. Yes, alright. Uh, <laughs> that's clever, actually. Negative 2,122. Sounds good to me. Now let's let's configure the solar panels to be a little bit smarter here. Can we fit eight at a time? Yeah. I'm not gonna use RCS on this. Uh, I'm gonna rely on the reaction wheel and the thrusters to handle things. Okay, that's a little bit off. Maybe I'm gonna shift this down. So have some... Oh, uh, battery capacity can be put into here. I think I'll do that. Oh no, this isn't uh, one of the service modules, so it can't. So let's slap some batteries on the side instead. Oh, we've unlocked new antennae. What kind of range does this have? Uh, what's this one? This one says... Uh, well, that's the even bigger than... This is the one we're using. 900... 900,000 kilometers. 400 million kilometers. Okay. But this one snaps under high dynamic pressure. See, this one didn't. That was its beauty. Its uh, wonderfulness. Snaps under high dynamic pressure. Everything else is snaps under high dynamic pressure. Anything, do we have... Uh, no. Hmm. But this one's light. Oh, just this. Oh, it's big though. Sort of a. <laughs> well, that's very interesting. How much does it require? 0.09 charge per second? This one is 0.08. Let me take uh, this. Oh, not what I wanted. It's just this. Put this over here along with side this one. Okay, what I want is some science on here now. And we should put it on this side so I can reach it while the other antenna is out. So this is interesting. Interesting situation we've got here. I guess we'll put some barometers on. I, I know we will be able to get some readings. Oh, uh, we got lights, right? So I should put at least some sort of lighting on here. Uh, do I have enough solar panels, do you suppose? I don't think so. Maybe I should stretch the body of this out a little bit more. Okay, and then uh, let's try and squeeze another set of solar panels in. Oh, that's fair enough. Uh, well, let's move this up.
see now we're gonna get a lot more Delta V out of this little guy than we were out of the RCS and it'll burn faster too so that's the that's the charm of it yep so we're going to but bringing it back can I pop the parachutes <laughs> this is this thing again um, You will have to see. I think it'll be alright. Ooh, one thing I can do is transmit a lot of inform- Let's- uh, With this much Delta V, you see, one thing I was thinking about was maybe getting into orbit around the moon first and transmitting information from there before bringing this back. So we're going to do some- yeah, we're going to get low over the moon and really do more stuff. No, well, not that much stuff. We've got three on the other side already. Right? Or two. Well, let's get one more on here then. Obviously, I'm putting the experiments on this side because I've got that uh, antenna on the other side. Uh, let me make sure I've got this action grouped. Yeah. And I guess we can action group this one too. Alright, so that's an in interesting little probe we've got here now. But let's let's fix up the rest of the launcher because Well It's a wee bit underpowered now. Perhaps I can empty this a little bit. Or actually it's probably better to... Uh, oh no. Can I click on this tank like this? No. Can I click on this like this? No. Oh yes I can. Okay. Uh, do it like this is probably better just to keep things balanced. Hopefully. I'm going to extend the space stage. It'll be... Its stress weight ratio will be a little bit low. I'm going to go for... That much. I'm, I'm leaning towards putting SRBs on it. Just to give it a little bit of a boost. I don't know if I want to do it on this mission or not. But perhaps for a future mission, that that's going to be a thing. Everything else seems to be all kosher, so let's get this. Come on, fairing. Get this on there. The base seems to be a little bit narrow, but... I guess I'll be alright. Uh, maybe we can... Oh, that makes it look a little bit better. Okay, so that'll be our Highland probe, and we're going to see if it can uh, get to the moon, get around the moon, do some experiments there, and come back safely. Alright, so let's save, and yeah, take this out to launch pad, and hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. Uh, oh, well, first of all, let's got the fairings on a separate thing but yeah uh, I, I, I think I've got everything don't I all right well uh, let's find out uh, no I did not remember anything lights we need lights back to the VAB I mean need lights is a pretty strong term obviously I don't know if uh, would 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 NASA put lights on something like this I don't know I don't think so Whoa, those are big. Well, those are the only ones we've got. Uh, how heavy are they? Not very. That should be fine. Yeah, that'll be alright. 
Uh, so we'll only be lit on one side, but... Oh, I, I want to light up the... You know what? Let's, let's change which side these guys are on. So that I can light up the science instruments so I can reach them. So I know where they are, right? Yeah, that'll be good. Okay, I think that's the... Oh, let's... <laughs> always have to fix this up. But yeah, I think that's the only thing I need to worry about. Probably in this stage, right? Okay, save and launch. Well, this is night time, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is we need to figure out whether we're in the right place for launch. If we are, then I, I don't mind that it's night time. It uh, pretty much looks like we are, isn't it? We're very close to our... Let's, let's just make sure. Let me just line it up very, very clearly. And yeah, we are we're very close to our uh, ascending node, so we're going to be aiming a little bit south. Uh, what is it? 113.5 uh, degrees. And it is in the dark, but since we're so close to where we ought to be for a transit to the moon, I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, so it will be a nighttime launch. All right, on that note, SAS on, throttles up. And of course, you've seen this particular rocket launch before, so it shouldn't be a big issue. Obviously, we've tweaked the bomb stage a little bit, so maybe there's something, but I don't think there's going to be a problem. So for most part, it'll be mostly orbital. All right, so off we go. Oh, we've got some oscillations here. Got to take SAS off. Okay, stage two is a go. I have a little bit of trouble controlling this thing uh, during the transition, but seems like we're okay now. Uh, let's try and get it back to our prograde marker, please. Uh, that's better. Make sure our inclination is what we want. Yeah, we're uh, reducing the difference between us and the moon, so that's fine. Got a long way to go yet. We can dump the fairings at this point, so let me bring the fairings down here. And eject and lights please uh, lighting is sort of a bit weak but okay uh, let's get the commutron out hmm. okay So apparently in the new version of real solar system, the atmosphere for Earth has been increased. Instead of uh, at 103 kilometers, it's been increased, I think it was 180 or something like that. Um, 
which is good. I, I don't mind that at all, especially since I rarely ever get my orbit down into 180 anyway, as you can see. Just the sheer amount of time it takes to burn burn these stages out means that I can't get my apoapsis uh, below 180, so so no, no worries there. Okay, here we go for stage three. And the fairing just decided to come right at us, okay. I do like the sound of this particular rocket. So I think we're actually under power. Uh, uh, below our requirement for Delta V on this stage because the probe is heavier. I can't imagine why. I guess we packed a lot of fuel into the probe. So we'll probably have to burn the probe's little engine for a little bit in order to get to the moon. This is no longer uh, a stage that will get us all the way there. Okay, that'll do. 247.5 by 229 and uh, 23.47 degrees on the inclination. I think that's fine. The problem is that, well, it's not really a problem. Uh, so we have about 300 meters per second of delta V short on this third stage for a lunar transfer. But all that means is that we're going to have to use this stage, which is probably better anyway because that stage is throttleable, and we can then be a little bit more precise about transfer than we were with, uh, well, frankly, with this mission, which I guess this is the transfer stage that is still hanging out there. All right, so let's, uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, transfer to to the moon. Where should we do this from? Let's say here. Ooh, uh, 0.1 on the inclination, relative inclination to the moon. That's very good. So our plan is to get pretty close in. I don't want to be all standoffish. I want to get in close. So that means... And then we can do those other ex experiments that we didn't get the first time around. So moon periapsis 1.5. Okay, crashing into the moon is, is in this case exactly what we, well not what we want to do, but what the kind of trajectory we would like. We are not going to have a uh, re uh, return plotted yet. We are going to go straight there and try again to orbit actually. Getting close, get into orbit. All right, so that's that'll be close, and so that's that's what we're gonna plan to do in one hour. As usual, this thing is a little bit tough to turn, so I will use the computer to go to the node. And actually, maybe I'll use the computer to do the burn here too. Um, Though I don't think I need to because this this one will be completely expended anyway. But I'll have it keep to the node while I'm burning. So that there's no wiggle. Let's get an angle where we can actually see stuff. Not much stuff to see really uh, because the light is only on the probe. And only a glancing blow at it. Hmm, I don't know what this is making. Uh, there's, there's something that makes a little bit of a G-force in a sound. I don't know what that's all about. 
Um, anyway, fuel is very unstable. Uh, this thing hopefully will get back to our node, yes. And I want one of the other rockets. Come on, flight computer. Come on, flight computer. Hmm. It's not really helping out here. Slowly. Okay, so very unstable. Getting ready to do this. We're a little bit late. Okay. There we go. Uh huh. Okay, this is producing some wiggle that I don't need. So yeah, turns out flight computer is not the best solution here. Oh, off we go. We'll also be able to, if we want, uh, we might as well burn out the second knowledge rocket anyway. So I keep those up there just because I don't necessarily need them. And I just uh, I have a habit of putting stuff up on top uh, if I'm not too sure whether I'll need it or not, and to bring it down when I need it. Since we can reconfigure the stages uh, here anyway, there's no reason not to. Okay, preparing for third stage burnout. Okay, there's the third stage. Uh, alleged rockets give us a tiny little bit of a boost. And I'm going to throttle down before separating because we're aimed in the wrong direction. And if I say not deploy shoot, I want to uh, control from here. I don't know if it'll change my direction. No, it won't. So I'm just going to have to remember everything is reversed, I guess. Uh, or maybe there's no way I can control from anything else, so... Can I? No. Okay, so yeah, I'm just going to have to remember that everything is reversed. That's fine. That just makes things more interesting. Key thing though now is that I want to pay attention to exactly what's happening with my orbit as I light this stage. Let me just get rid of my maneuver node. It's bound to confuse things anyway. Okay, moon periapsis of 31 kilometers sounds fine to me. All right, and we have uh, 2,250 meters per second worth of delta V, which might be enough to get us into orbit around the moon, or it should be enough to get us back from it. Either way, we will find out. So here's our probe. Can't really see too much of it. The heat shield, of course, is a little bit interesting. Let's activate this little fellow and we want it to target G status as usual so that's open if that open uh, the electric charge requirement is a little bit onerous so for now I'm gonna turn off the lights oh. do the lights not take much electric charge or something? huh I guess not This actually reports how much electric charge it's using, right? Yeah, 0.09 charge per second. This doesn't say anything about it. Okay, well maybe I should put more lights on next time. 
Uh, right. Well, let me get uh, this thing hooked up. So, GSTAT, please. Okay, GSTAT is ready for action, and instead of Force City, it's going to be connected to the Highland slash Force City. And selection charge is still good. All right, that's all we needed to do here. Let's get back to okay. Outbound probe. Where is it? That is the old Force City. This must be the outbound one now. There we go. Okay, so that's that's the idea. Now, let's get out from from Earth Shadow so that we can get ourselves some sunlight. Make sure our solar panels are gonna recharge us. Okay. Well, that looks uh, flush on. So, and we do seem to be recharging a bit. So. That looks good. Alright, I think we can go with this. We could actually uh, deactivate this commutron if, if this antenna is working properly, and hopefully it is. If it can let me select it. Yes, no. Not the stretchable fuel tank. There we go. No, can't see how it's not helping us right now. But uh, of course, we are directly over the KSC, so tough to say. Um, many, many lines of communication here. That's interesting. Don't know what that's all about, but okay. Uh, let's not have all those lines. Alright, yeah, let's try and... Well, while while we're recharging, I don't think we need to worry about the Communitron. Let's keep it on for now. Let's continue out. Oh, now our moon periapsis is 232. I hate when it does that. Better to adjust that from here rather than closer in. I learned that lesson. Yep, it's not uh, really showing me what my new one would be. Whew, look at these. Actually, you know what? Let me take a look at this. Ooh, look at this. Actually, that's not a bad situation right there. I like that one a lot. I think it'll be very easy to get into orbit like that. Okay. So just a little bit of a radial touch. And that should help. Okay, let's turn to this maneuver. It's radial, so it's either up or down. There we go. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. God sakes, wrong way around. So, was that uh, 40 degrees ish? Shall we go around here to negative 40 degrees? Not really showing me enough data here. No, no, it's just showing me a moon encounter and moon. Oh, I hate this thing sometimes. So maybe too much. I'm not really seeing an improvement in my situation here. Perhaps it's because I did so soon rather than. Let me go with that hypothesis for a sec.
Okay, that's rather a lot of time to spend on that hypothesis. Well, I can't get it too much more precise than that. And that's a shame because we were doing so much better than that before. Okay, well, I'm going to be satisfied with that. Um, so, I need to go out over here to do a 4 meter per second burn and hope that this will actually fix things. And then after that, I have to remember to point this thing in the direction that will allow it to get some sunlight. Okay. Let's hope that one holds this time. Now, sunlight. Where is our sun? Yeah, we're definitely not pointing in the right direction for it. Okay. We continue.